Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first event of the Cell Camp AMA series for Batch 5. I'm Rachel from Cello Camp, and I'm really excited to be kicking off Batch 5 with all of you. I welcome you to introduce yourselves in the chat to the right. Tell us what you're working on, where in the world you're tuning in from, and who you are. Um, we have an awesome event lined up for you today with Marek Olszewski, co-founder and CTO at C-Labs, and President Evelora and Brandy Camacho, Devrel at C-Labs. Hi, Marek. Hi, Brandy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Hey, so great to be here. Um, and in today's talk, we'll first hear from Eric, and uh, he'll be diving into the latest on Solo Tech today and into the future. And then we'll hear from Brandy, who will speak about creating mobile dApps on Solo. So you'll definitely receive helpful tools and resources to get your project started on Solo. And then we will open the floor up for questions from all of you. Um, I see uh, people tuning in from Belarus, Italy, um, you know, from all over the world. So we welcome you all today and to our community. Um, and before we do get started, I'd like to briefly speak about Solo Camp and what's ahead. For those of you um, who are new, Solo Camp is an eight-week virtual acceleration and mentorship program for decentralized tech founders building on Solo. Whether you're an early stage or later stage startup, we welcome you to apply. It's a great way to either get your project started um, and off the ground or to refine and scale your project. So um, it's also a place where you can meet like-minded individuals. You'll be receiving one-on-one -on -one mentorship from industry experts in both, in both business and technology, a chance to win prizes in CUSD, um, there is a high exposure to investment opportunities, which is really great, and a fast track to grants, as well as um, some pretty great perks from our partners. The deadline to apply is March 22nd, so we encourage you to um, go to cellocamp.com for more information. You can apply there, or if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the direct application link. Um, and while we're at the bottom of the screen, you'll also see an ask a question tab. So here you can ask questions throughout the event, and when we get started with the AMA, the AMA. Um, we'll be looking to that tab to uh, have Marek or Brandy answer your questions. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today um, from all around the world. And thank you, Marek and Brandy, for um, joining us to share your knowledge and insights with uh, the community. So um, before we do get started, Marek and Brandy, if you'd like to briefly introduce yourselves, and then we'll go into Marek's presentation. Awesome. Well, it's so wonderful to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, hi, so I'm Eric. I'm um, the CTO at C Labs, one of the companies building out the, the core seller protocol, uh, and then also president at Belora, uh, one of the um, many now mobile wallets on the platform. Um, yeah, I've been on this journey for four years now, and it's just so wonderful uh to uh, be sharing it with uh, a growing community at this point that is just really excited about our mission so yeah i'm really looking forward to chatting today likewise thank you so much for having us rachel thank you i'm really proud of cello camp i love the history the traction and the support that it provides to the community at large globally what a challenge uh to uh organize and structure and the results are clear, right? We're on batch five. This is this huge uh, moment for all of us. So I just wanna say thank you. Uh, my name is Brandy Camacho. I'm with Developer Relations with Cello Org. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here today. I would love to help out. And I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit about our tooling and support for uh, your projects and ways that we can help support each other. So let's kick things off. This is gonna be a great little talk this morning. Merrick, what's, what's on the agenda today? Yeah. Great question. Well, let me share my slides. <clears throat> cool. So on the agenda is uh, you had me at Cello. Uh, so just wanted to spend a, a few uh, minutes talking a little bit about our past, um, what's going on in the ecosystem, and then also what is um, coming up next. Um, and so, um, you know, there's some familiar faces in, in, in the chat. So this is a slide that, that you know well, uh, but for new folks coming into the ecosystem, you might be curious, you know, what, 
what is this whole seller community all about? What's um, what's kind of keeping, what's driving it uh, to work together? Uh, and really, I would say it's this kind of big and ambitious mission that we have, which is to build a financial system that creates uh, the conditions for prosperity for everyone. Um, and it's a it's a big, uh, certainly an ambitious mission, uh, but it's one that we're we're actually starting to really put put a dent in. So Celo now has 2.4 million addresses, um, kind of the best proxy we have for users on the platform. Uh, and we're tracking that it's being used in, in over 150 countries, which uh, certainly makes it um, much more international than, than your typical um, blockchain project out there. And so that's really, really exciting. Uh, but if you think back to um, or if we go back to you know when we first started four years ago, um, when we started thinking about how we wanted to succeed, um, you know um, the the thing that really uh, kind of struck us back then was um, kind of this opportunity to build a a global Venmo. Um, if if you think about you know the impact that WhatsApp has had on on the world, you know there was a time before uh, you were able to send text messages for free to anyone in the world, uh, and now that past feels like a distant, um, um, it feels so long ago. Uh, it's hard to believe that it actually uh, was quite recently when when this was quite difficult to do. Um, you know the same is going to be true with value. Uh, there's going to be a day when it's going to be absolutely trivial to send value anywhere in the world to, to any any person in the world. Um, and um, we are certainly convinced uh, that to um, succeed with, with this, uh, we need to do it in a mobile manner. Um, um, if you look at the, the kind of latest um, data around mobile adoption, it's actually pretty compelling. It's actually really, really exciting. Uh, there's now over 8.5 billion smartphones, sorry, 8.5 billion mobile phones that have app active mobile subscription, uh, according to the Ericsson Mobility Report, uh, Six over 6 billion of which now are smartphones. And so smartphone adoption is just uh, through the roof. Uh, and uh, that's exciting because that means that the world is ready uh, for um, a fully kind of decentralized global Venmo. Um, and then connectivity is also just really, really uh, also uh, improving. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, there's still a lot of 2G out there. And, you know, the fact is that it's really, really dramatically uh, decreasing. I like think 80% of all connectivity right now is, is 3G or better. Uh, and in the next three years, it's going to get to over 90%. Um, and so the conditions are, are, are great uh, to build um, uh, a global um, kind of um, WhatsApp of money, so to speak. But how, how do you build it uh, or how do you build it? Um, you know, when we first started, uh, we, we tried doing this actually on... Ethereum um, four and a half years ago, and we learned relatively quickly that um, Ethereum wasn't able to deliver the, the platform experience that we needed to create a product that anyone in the world could use. And so that took us down on the journey of um, building the Celo platform. We really wanted to build a, um, a layer one that would allow anyone in the world to build you know, these really great mobile experiences uh, like um, kind of this this kind of decentralized Venmo, um, and so you know what is Celo um, concretely? Well, it's a fully EVM compatible uh, layer one uh, with a few plus pluses. Um, you might be wondering what these plus pluses are, uh, and I would say they are mostly. I would say we can categorize them into kind of three areas. Uh, the first is uh, around uh, stable value currencies. So similar to Terra, Celo has um, native stable coins built into the platform. Right now, there are three stable coins, the Celo dollar, the Celo euro, uh, and uh, the recently launched Celo Brazilian real. And, you know, these are implemented as, you know, algorithmic uh, stable coins um, implemented as Solidity smart contracts that are ERC-20 compatible. 
And one of the really nice properties of the Celo platform is that you can pay for transaction fees with these tokens. Um, technically, any ERC20 token that's been whitelisted through on-chain governance. And right now, um, the Celo dollar, Celo euro, and Celo Brazilian real uh, are, are whitelisted. And as we'll talk about in a bit, that really unlocks some, some really nice experiences for end users. Uh, the next is um, Celo's decentralized phone verification protocol. Uh, this allows people to build applications that let you send value to phone numbers, both before and after someone creates a wallet. So that's really, really exciting. The ability to send value to someone before someone creates a wallet is um, something that centralized uh, companies have done for a long time uh, for their growth goals. And so it's really cool to be able to do that in a fully decentralized way. <clears throat> and then finally, um, Celo has a um, mobile optimized like client that right now is 17,000 times lighter than, than something like Ethereum. Um, and uh, there's also a version of it that's 1.7 million times lighter as well. Um, this is really important because if you... If you think about um, you know Web three technologies being globally adopted um, and and people actually transacting on a day to day basis with them, um, one of the things that makes Web three so exciting is the fact that it's censorship resistant, is the fact that it's surveillance resistant. But unless you have like clients that actually work with these layer ones, you're throwing all of that away because you know a typical DAP or or mobile wallet is just connecting through something like Infura. Uh, which is very, very centralized in its nature. Um, and so Celo um, worked really, really hard to create a like client that, that um, allows you to build uh, wallets um, and, uh, and dApps that, that actually leverage it. Uh, and, and this is just really, really, really exciting. And so, you know, what's the result? Well, you know, the result is that you can build uh, amazing mobile wallets. Uh, and dApps uh, on top of the platform. Uh, Valora is one such um, wallet. If you haven't tried it, I, I highly recommend you, you check it out. You can find it on valoraapp.com. Um, it really, I think, um, kind of highlights each of these features that I just talked about. Um, it's fully open source as well, so you can fork it. Um, and you know, ultimately, it lets you interact with the seller blockchain and, and send value to, to any phone number um, with ease to anyone in your contact list. So definitely, definitely check it out. Um, and, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, um, what does this all mean to me? Uh, you know, I'm, I want to build a dApp and, and integrate with the ecosystem. You know, one uh, case study that might be interesting for you is Impact Market. Uh, they are a Celo Camp, I think, batch one uh, alumni. So, um, you know, a really great example of what, what um, um, a team coming out of Celo Camp uh, can accomplish. And it's really impressing, impressive. They've raised now millions of dollars uh, and have been uh, dispersing it in the form of a UBI to tens of thousands of, of beneficiaries, all using the Celo platform. Um, while using the, the Valora wallet as, as kind of the wallet that they recommend their beneficiaries to use. And so um, this is happening everywhere, including in, in, in or everywhere here on the, uh, shown by this heat map. Uh, one of the um, regions uh, that they operate in is Laura de Freitas in Brazil, uh, which is a favela community in, in Brazil. Uh, and um, Impact Market organized um, kind of a community town hall where they talked about the program and they, they onboarded people onto Valora and onto the Impact Market app. And from then on, people were able to uh, simply with a tap of a button uh, claim their, their daily UBI. And the thing that got me you know, particularly excited uh, when I heard about all of this is that um, you know, because this is all crypto-based and because Crypto offers incentives, and um, and the funds are being dispersed in Celo dollars. Um, the the community as a whole got interested in, in this program and also wanted in, 
including merchants. And so merchants started accepting uh, seller dollars using Valora. Um, and rather than having kind of these EBI recipients instantly cash out, instead, you know, very organically, uh, kind of an ecosystem formed where people started transacting day to day using Valora, like, um, you know, say you and I, uh, um, you know, might be using uh, Venmo today. Um, but, you know, in this case, um, settling everything on the blockchain. So just really, really, really exciting stuff. Um, you know, the community um, also really loved it. And they painted this mural, uh, which is just really heartwarming to see. They, they also tried to organize a, a Valora fair, um, but COVID put a damper on that. And, you know, so I think, you know, Venmo is, is one great product now that, that we can build in, in a fully decentralized manner. But, you know, Celo as a platform is, is great, not just for, you know, experiences like that. And, um, you know, one way I wanted to kind of demo that is to um, kind of play this quick video for you. This is just a video of... Um, um, uh, um, of kind of the onboarding flow with Valora and then um, in this particular case, Denise using Valora uh, to um, interact with some dApps. So here we are, um, you know, just setting up uh, Denise's account. I mentioned that Valora has, you know, this decentralized phone verification. We're going to skip that just in the interest of time, but definitely, definitely check it out. Um, and then since um, Stella supports paying for gas with stable coins, you know, the natural thing to cash in with in this particular case is a stable coin. It's just much easier for users to kind of grok and much less intimidating. So um, Ramp is, is a really great cash in, cash out um, product in the Stella ecosystem. Uh, they have a great mobile interface and it's integrated directly into Valora and into um, third party dApps as well. So feel free to uh, integrate it as well. And as you can see, you can cash in and you can get your, um, your cello dollars relatively easily. And then if you want to do something with them, like in this case, if you want to buy some uh, cello, uh, you can do that. And again, you can actually pay for that transaction fee in cello dollars. And the whole thing settles really quickly because cello has one block finality with five second block times. So here you can see already that, that Denise has both Cello Dollars and Cello in her in her wallet. Uh, next, she's curious about dApps in the Cello ecosystem. Uh, this is a recent addition to Valora. There's a dApp browser now that lets you uh, discover all the different dApps in the Cello ecosystem and and actually use them. Uh, and since you know everyone's building in this kind of mobile first manner, um, they work really great on on Denise's mobile phone. And so here, um, Denise is going to buy some Moolah um, Cello dollars. Moolah is also a Cello Camp um, company. Uh, and um, we're going to kind of approve the transaction uh, and sign the deposit transaction now. Um, and one really nice thing about uh, Valora is that um, it supports both Wallet Connect, but also DAP Kit. And DAPKit has this nice feature where it actually sends you back to your DAP after you've signed a transaction. And so the end result is you kind of are navigating back and forth between the two apps in a way that's quite seamless. Uh, on Android, you don't even have to press the open in Valora um, kind of um, button that you see. Uh, and so it's it's really quite a quite a seamless experience. And so here, just bought some Moolah CUSD and also some WET. Uh, and, um, you know, it was just so, so easy. So that's kind of a really great example of just what you can build. Um, you know, if you uh, if you integrate with uh, the Cello ecosystem um, and, and also just how uh, amazingly it all works on, on mobile devices. So, a lot of that was um, kind of things um, that that had happened to date. Uh, you might be wondering, well, what's next in, in the Cello ecosystem? What's new? 
Um, I think probably the biggest thing that um, everyone's excited about, at least I'm extremely excited about, is the fact that uh, Kickstarter announced that they're decentralizing. Um, this is absolutely huge, uh, obviously for Kickstarter, but also for the broader Web3 ecosystem. Um, and the thing that I'm you know, particularly excited about is the fact that they have publicly stated that they are picking the seller platform. Uh, as the blockchain that they want to do so on. So that's that's going to be uh, amazing. Keep an eye out for their white paper and um, their launch. Um, I hear things are going well. So I'm, I'm just, again, really, really, really pumped for this. Um, and, you know, with something like Kickstarter come will come a lot of transactions. And, you know, Celo has a I would say a, a really great modern proof of stake consensus protocol and, and has really good scalability and has never in its uh, almost two year lifetime had any downtime. Um, but certainly, you know, we can plan ahead for even more load. Um, and so uh, when we were doing that is uh, through a partnership, the Sella Foundation has partnered with uh, Miston Labs. Uh, Miston Labs is, um, a company founded by a lot of former DM, Libra, and Novi, um, kind of researchers and subject matter experts. Um, and they are now working with C-Labs to, to bring a lot of really great uh, consensus improvements uh, to the Cello ecosystem. And so they're working with C-Labs right now to add Narwhal to Cello's mempool. Narwhal is a really great protocol that allows you to not have to broadcast your transactions uh, effectively twice uh, in every block. And so that dramatically um, makes the whole consensus protocol much more bandwidth efficient. Um, uh, we're also working on faster batch signature verification, pipelining, the introduction of Tusk, which is another kind of consensus protocol um, that's an evolution of hot stuff. Um, and then finally, uh, also side-by-side -side, uh, move support. And so all of this will um, really help us achieve kind of our goal, which is to be kind of the fastest decentralized EVM chain out there. Um, and so if you're you know, thinking about which platform you want to build on, uh, you certainly want to make sure you pick one that's future-proofed. And so rest assured that the Celo platform is investing heavily to, um, to make sure that it can keep up with demand. Um, the other uh, exciting, um, I think, recent piece of news is, is that the Cella Real uh, launched uh, recently. Uh, this is Cello's third stablecoin. And so if you're in LATAM and you have an interest in targeting the Brazilian market, um, there's a really great stablecoin that is now um, being actively uh, integrated with all the, all the local uh, centralized exchanges and, and payment providers. And so super exciting uh the espresso hard fork is coming as well uh in in just a matter of weeks now uh espresso will bring bring cello up uh to full compatibility with the last ethereum hard fork right now it's compatible with the hard fork before the last one uh, it also includes a bunch of performance uh and other improvements so uh keep an eye out for that it's going to be really exciting as well and then, you know, finally, uh, the last, uh, I think, bit of news that, you know, should probably excite developers uh, is that Etherscan is coming. Um, so they're actively integrating with the Cello platform right now and, and hopefully only uh, a month or so away from their launch. Um, Cello does have Block Scout, which is uh, an excellent block explorer. But, you know, Etherscan has definitely become the, the de facto default that, that developers and users uh, now have uh, gotten to know. And so uh, super exciting that that's coming as well. Uh, I think that's all the time I have. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to, to kind of thank you and uh, excited for, for Brandy's talk now and then looking forward to answering any questions you guys have. Excellent. Oh my goodness, Mary. I'm excited. Like I'm in the ecosystem and every time I hear about our advancements, I just get more excited because it seems like that 
we're moving towards being the leader in utility with a mobile focus uh, for global accessibility. And it's a testament to our mission. Like we are so mission aligned and focused and I'm just proud to, to be here, privileged to work with you and the community at large. So nonetheless, you heard about some wonderful things from Merrick and without a doubt, Cello is continuing to focus on that utility side, right? Give the powers and tools for you to build meaningful applications in the ecosystem where you can uh, contribute uh, at large. So let me go ahead and share my slide deck. Uh, let me go ahead and all these different screen casting utilities. It takes a minute, hot minute to get in there. Uh, let me know if it's coming on. Yes. yes we're good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So uh, as Merrick mentioned, we need to focus on the ability to uh, continue to support growth for the community at large. So um, let's talk about developer tools, right? Like what, what's available for you to build as you uh, look for providing solutions to the ecosystem? Well, I want to talk about that. Cello is obviously expanding and the goal for accessibility reaches more than just uh, focusing on the user interface side. Like we have some backend logistics and uh, something that's really important about Cello is, is the EVM. Like our goal is to be the fastest EVM chain out there, EVM++, and I believe it, uh, as you can tell from Merrick's uh, uh, presentation, uh, these things are in motion. So general purpose tooling, right? EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine has been around for a long time. It has matured. And the nice thing about Celo is not ignoring this vast uh, ecosystem of tools available that are literally cross-chain uh, reach, right? And we wanna be able to include that and support that uh, as we grow, which is nice about our focus on hard forks and the ability to provide enhancements to the protocol so we can take advantage of these tools as they too grow and expand with their reach. So general purpose tooling, EVM tools were fully compatible. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Then I'm gonna go into the JavaScript side. JavaScript's big, you can do full stack development. That's your back end, that's your front end uh, in, in Web3. Uh, and it's really interesting, back in in Web 2 is APIs back in in Web 3. Well, that's our smart contract uh, uh, platform. And of course, you can do the hybrid approach uh, doing both. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, then I'm going to go into uh, some additional tools like Celo CLI, Java, Swift, and good old uh, Geek, Go Ethereum. Uh, so EVM, general purpose tooling. I kind of test based on this. I alluded to the fact that it's that it's uh, growing with its support. And Ether's JS, you can see it in the commit history. It's too, is getting support and working really well for developers. You literally set up your provider uh, and your network config, and then you're able to communicate with the cell platform with literally little friction. Uh, same thing's true, Web3, we have support, hard hat, truffle, Remix, love Remix, fastest way to prototype, like jump into Remix, put your smart contract in there, configure, test it. You're not having to worry about uh, any of the uh, funding with testnet. You can just stay local to really uh, uh, test the features uh, of your use case. Uh, then MetaMask support, and it just keeps on growing. Like this is a very small list, but what I wanted to share with you is I have QR codes uh, on my slide deck. And so at any time, feel free to follow along or capture the QR codes because on the right here, uh, Jason, who works at the Cello Foundation has done a fabulous job of making sure that we have a, a list curated of all these tools that will help you in regards to your use case when it comes to building and expanding your application. So take a, a screenshot of this uh, QR code and then you'll go to a nice list. And right here on the bottom right hand side, uh, I also made sure to put in the URL there uh, so that way you too can just capture that and follow along. Uh, but it's true, we are uh, elastic in our reach. And something that's just amazing when you think about the mobile focus of Cello is that uh, providing uh, tooling support in the EVM is crucial to our uh, roadmap of uh, being the fastest EVM chain. Uh, next slide, contract kit. Hmm, contract kit. I'm sure you've probably heard around, if you've been poking around in Cello uh, org or looking at the, you know, the docs or within uh, various resources in our community, you've probably heard about contract kit. 
I just want to touch base on the story of Contract Kit here. Uh, it's a general purpose library. Uh, the Contract Kit has constantly matured. We're on release 1.52. Uh, once again, feel free to access the QR code or find out more information by going to that URL. It's really easy to get started. Contract Tick is literally using the Web3 uh, standard, and we're wrapping on top of that with the additional features that you can take advantage of for your use cases, uh, such as core contracts. Uh, and there's various other utilities in there as well uh, for you to build out your use cases. So Contract Kit is super flexible. And when it comes down to no connectivity, like what we're talking about there, no connectivity is like, you can set up your own uh, private chain if you wanted to have your RPC connection and you can configure contract kit to interact there. Uh, if you wanna use a hosted node provider, no problem. It handles that as well. It's just a configuration of uh, uh, parameters that allow you to take advantage and, and implement contract kit with inside your use case. Now, I just want to emphasize, this is a general purpose library. So why is that important? Well, things like use contract kit. Use contract kit is on version 2.14, and this is by far the easiest way to bootstrap your project when it comes down to React and working with React components. So we have built-in uh, uh, systems that allow you to, with ease, implement wallet support, tie into Valora, tie into uh, MetaMask. There's so much here in regards to support. I can't even uh, emphasize the core point because of the limited time, but like I mentioned before, QR code and that URL, you definitely want to check this out. What's going on with Contract Kit fundamentally, it, it's using the core Contract Kit general purpose library. It's wrapping it with features to make your development use cases streamlined to get you started as quickly as possible. Uh, it reduces friction and it, and it allows you to uh, focus on your user experience. So definitely check out Use Contract Kit. Uh, now, uh, what does that look like, like wallet support? Why is this important? Well, if you've been building in Web3 for a while, you know that coming to a screen like this on the desktop uh, from a development standpoint can be challenging. And so there's other, there's options out there, right? The space has been growing and it's so nice to see wallet support uh, enhanced throughout the years because uh, I, I want to say during the last growth cycle, uh, we had a clear issue with wallets, right? They were not providing the, the scalability that the space needed and we're finally getting there. And Valora, a leader in the space, focusing on, on making sure that you have um, the ease of ability to transact by using your phone number. Uh, you saw Merrick's uh, scale chart in regards to connectivity. Well, that's important here. Now I'm showing the desktop mode, like how does that connect with the mobile story? Well, that's, that's a fantastic thing about Celo is that it's mobile ready from the start. Like if you notice this screenshot here is using uh, the debug tools in Chrome to simulate the mobile environment. And if you look right here, it says connect mobile, Valora, Wallet Connect, and then you have the option to show more, which then gives you the ability of all, uh, all these options, plus so much more in regards to tailoring it for your needs. So fully customizable, fully extensible uh, library of support for you. So definitely check out Use Contract Kit and uh, one of the things I just want to really emphasize here, this is the easiest way to access Contract Kit in your React application. The flexible wallet support should not be ignored. That's the fastest way to get started and fully customizable, extensible. That is the core value prop. Uh, please uh, dig into it. Uh, as you notice, docs.cello.org, this is going to be a key component. So anything I'm going over, over here, you can always find in our docs. Let's just talk about getting started quickly. I already shared like use contract kit without a doubt. It reduces friction and provides you the ability to focus on the user experience, plugging in the modules that matter most to your use case. But to get started quickly, especially when it comes down to experimenting, maybe you have an MVP, a proof of concept, you're trying to graduate to a release candidate and you're experiencing friction. Well, that's where a starter kit really comes in because it allows you to take advantage of some core fundamentals that have been built out for you uh, it has some starter code in there so that way you can reverse engineer these concepts so it can streamline your development cycle. Uh, so that's why I put this thing in here, supercharge your development cycle, because it's so true. So let's talk about that starter kit. Uh, well, get, you want to get started quickly. 
Uh, it's a fast track development time. I already mentioned and alluded to the reverse engineering of libraries, super valuable for all you developers out there. And then it's a progressive Web3 boilerplate. And what's that mean? It's like, it's a mobile first boilerplate. Uh, it's progressive D app. And, and it's also a progressive web app. And that's really important because the nice thing about a progressive web app is it expands your reach within uh, organic relationship with search engines, uh, shows that you're more compatible. It also allows, allows you to take advantage of your browser cache uh, to be able to uh, provide off, off, offline solutions. So your use case is still going during times where your users might encounter latency. So that's why it's important. And then of course, integration with hard hat, react hooks with use contract kit. And obviously contract kit is included. So all those features are there for you. Josh Kreitz, my teammate did a fantastic video. He worked really, really hard on this. Him, Joe and the team, uh, just really proud of their work here. Uh, that QR code should take you to Josh Kreitz uh, intro video. So you can learn more. It's a short video under 10 minutes. Uh, get you started quickly, right? And that's really the, the key value purpose here. So uh, just getting, going back to this slide because this slide takes you directly to the GitHub repository. You'll also find that information is riddled with inside our docs. So docs.cello.org, uh, if you type in progressive DApp starter, it'll, it, it will get you the information. Matter of fact, anything that I share with you uh, today uh, and a lot of things that Merrick have touched based on, you can find within our documentation site. So, Cello CLI, a different pivot. But the story continues. And what I mean by story continues, we have this core general purpose library called Contract Kit. Uh, I already shared with you how it integrates in with uh, various wrappers for uh, EVM uh, tooling. Uh, now, the story continues in regards to command line interface. There's times where uh, developers just need information quickly, or maybe you don't even need to just uh, use it for debugging purposes or implementations of new methods for your application use cases. Maybe you need to help participate in elections, on-chain governance, uh, ease and streamline the multi-sig process with uh, contracts and wallets. Uh, Believe it or not, this command line interface also provides you ledger support, which is super nice because uh, it focuses on the security side. All these tools are rel relatively easy to implement. Uh, using Node Package Manager or, e or even Yarn uh, is supported as well. Uh, it's a one-liner, right? Implement the library, and then here's the command to uh, the command format to take advantage of it. So, what's that look like? Kind of looks like this, right? Like. Uh, my, this is my favorite thing to do. I'm testing all the time. I need new wallets. Uh, I can set up processes, run JavaScript, run Java, whatever it is that I'm doing in my code base. The fact is switching contests is expensive. A lot of times we like to have our code editors there and we want to focus, but we need test accounts. And I use this all the time for test accounts. The coolest thing is, is that you have the ability to just type uh, Cello CLI and then it brings up all the uh, commands available for you. When you go into those commands and you were, you type help on those commands too, you'll find that the rabbit hole goes deep in regards to its opportunity. And here's where the story continues. Contract kit is wrapped up in here as well in the cell of CLI, allowing you to experiment and extend uh, uh, the support. And like, this is extensible as well. Cell of CLI is extensible. So you can actually customize this for your own needs. So as you're a growing organization, you might need some internal tooling. Cello CLI will help fit that, fit that bill. Uh, so I, I, I shared a little bit about the, the documentation site, right? Like you want to go to docs.cello.org uh, and take advantage of the search features. Recently, we migrated to DocuSource. Now, that is nice because we were allowed to integrate it with additional features such as uh, fast ways to search. And obviously, the ability to switch from light mode, dark mode. I know, not like super feature rich there with the dark mode, light mode, but it's nice for uh, us developers that work uh, in the early hours or, or late at night. We want to be able to customize that interface. But the updated content is by far the biggest improvement here. So, DocuSource helps facilitate the plugin for like search and and location for translation of information. All that stuff is there, and we're working on it. And the content is constantly be updated. We have a blog full of tutorials available for you to view. And there's useful external resources like uh, 
for those that have been probably searching around, you probably ran into Figment. Figment is a fantastic ecosystem partner focusing on education. Definitely, definitely check out uh, their material as well. And we actually have a link uh, within our document to find them. Probably can't see it on the screen share, but it's right down there underneath tutorials. I definitely urge all of you to check it out. Now, I'm not done yet, right? I've covered a lot, but I'm gonna go into covering just a little bit more. Uh, Java, Cello SDK is available. Uh, it's in GitHub. I'm sorry I did not provide the QR code, but you can uh, search up uh, Java, Cello SDK Java in GitHub, get right to it. Um, I have the link down here. The nice thing about Java is that it's universal in its approach as well, just like the accessibility. So having these tools, these language supports uh, is important within Cello to fulfill our mission uh, and support the community at large, work in the code bases that they need to work in the most. And so we're constantly evolving our tooling. And you, as you notice, historically with Cello, we do our best to support the community and our tools are evolving. Uh, an example is like we have Android. So because the Java library is so universal, you can port that into Android native development and uh, be able to build natively for mobile as well. Now, uh, this works. I have an example on my repo on, on ways to integrate that existing Java SDK so you can put it into your Android workflow and it provides all the same functionalities like what you've noticed or if you view into the features of the contract kit, those are there as well. It's just another way to wrap those uh, functionalities for you in an SDK uh, to streamline your development experience. Uh, good news is that we are working on uh, improving these tooling. So coming soon in the future, I uh, look forward to improvements on these tools that I'm talking to you about. Uh, something relatively new is that we have an alpha release with Swift iOS. That means native development for iOS applications, such as your mobile phone, uh, iPad, all the iOS devices. Uh, this, is, this is just a fantastic move forward because it's expanding uh, our, our support so that way developers have options and opportunities to take advantage of the mobile-focused uh, platform that we have. Uh, moving forward, ETH, Go Ethereum. Hey, there's a lot of Go lovers out there. I like Go. Go's great. Uh, it provides a fantastic way to work on those backend services, performance, and you get to control the security, which is why it's pretty much a standard in the ecosystem for EVMs. And it, as you notice, like, you know, Celo is really strong on, on focus for the EVM plus plus. Like, we want to be the fastest chain. And we're working this code base. If you look at the commit history of Cello's uh, GitHub repository, it's just amazing what the team has done. Constantly evolving the project, focusing on its tooling, usability, and support. And we're seeing that as we go through these hard works like Expresso. So definitely check out uh, the Cello blockchain. It's available. You can compile Geet. You can customize Geet. You can even compile Geet for your mobile devices. So check it out. Uh, super cool to, to see. I just love what we're doing uh, here at Cello. So how and where to get started? Well, I think it's pretty clear, right? You want to go to docs.cello.org. Uh, we do have a blog site kind of configured. We're working on it, okay? These things are evolving. I just want to share with you that these URL, URLs can uh, change, but what doesn't change is going to be docs.cello.org. Follow that. And that will take you down to our tutorials as those get involved, our, our ecosystem partners. We're, our goal is literally at Developer Relations to streamline the experience for you to get you started building as quickly as possible and, and support the growth in the ecosystem. Uh, I do want to share uh, some good news. You probably heard about this, right? Cello Connect, is, I, I think it was pinged all over, uh, but Cello Connect uh, is happening April 4th. I, I love this. I can't wait for Cello Connect. Can't wait to meet the community there. Uh, this is going to be super fun. So go to celloconnect.com to learn more. Uh, and, you know, I would love to talk about opportunities in the ecosystem. Uh, fact is, I think this is where the uh, question answers come in. So I'm going to save this for any questions you have. We can go into the rabbit hole of opportunities. There's so much available. So much available. I just want to touch point on one thing. 2020 was the year of DeFi, right? DeFi expanded, grew its reach. Um, it proved wrong to all the naysayers saying that there was no utility in the blockchain and DeFi showed utility. So 2020 was a year of DeFi. 2021, the year of, of NFTs. And now 
2022 is looking like DAOs are starting to become quite important because what you're doing with DAOs, you're able to form organizations that take advantage of these pivotal technologies and incorporate them within your project. So that's one core opportunity. We can talk more uh, during the question answer session. And if you need to reach out, DevRel is available. Uh, we are a nimble team, uh, small in size right now. We are expanding. So expect there might be some latencies, uh, but do email message us, devrel at cello.org. Also reach us on Discord, like we're, we're there in Discord. Uh, I'm sure you should be able to find us. If not, this is a, a quick go-to for getting our attention. And for me, that's it. Like, oh, I tried going as quickly as possible. <laughs> yes, yeah, so questions and answers, this is gonna be fun. What are we hey. having? Thank you, Brandy and Merrick. I'm like super fired up for um, this next batch and what's coming on Cello. This is uh, this was a, an excellent talk so far, and we have a bunch of questions that came in. So um, why don't we just dive right in? Um, so the first one up is how can I get my app listed on Valora? Ah, let me paste Great. something in here to help support that. So sorry. Go ahead, Merrick. Sorry. Yeah, I think you you posted the same exact link I was thinking. <laughs> so definitely check out that link. Um, it has all the instructions. There's also some talk of the the Bake Off, which was a competition or is a competition that um, that DApps can. Um, compete with to get featured space at the top of that DAP screen. I think applications for that have closed, but only a few days ago. So if you hurry up and submit now, maybe you can still uh, squeeze in. And if not, I'm sure Valora will run additional competitions in the future. But yeah, that's the right uh, link. Uh, definitely check it out. Awesome. Oh, sorry, please go. I just have a question. I think that's probably good. I noticed that there is uh, the timeline for submission was extended. Uh, but what happens after the timeline? Do folks, Merrick, do you know if they're able to still go to the repository and follow the process for listing? Yes. Yeah, so you can always uh, follow that process to get added to, um, to the DAP screen. Uh, but if you want to compete in the Bake Off, I believe the deadline may have just passed. Um, but that's fine because you can still get listed. And again, Valora, I'm sure, will run more competitions in the future. Right. Awesome. So our next question is from um, Hans, which just got upvoted. Um, what does Cello in the way of reporting coming out of Valora for KYC and AML? Yeah, great question. Um, so uh, Valora is fully self-custodial, uh, which means that according to kind of the latest um, uh, FinCEN guidelines and data guidelines, um, is not considered a uh, hosted wallet and therefore uh, is not required to have a VASP license, uh, which would then require it to do uh, additional reporting. Um, but you know the landscape is changing so in the future maybe um, um, unhosted wallets will uh, require uh, those licenses and will require um, full um, kind of travel rule style reporting we uh, obviously we have to wait for that future to happen but uh, right now uh, there's no in, in a lot of the markets that, that the law operates in as far as we can tell there is no requirement um, that said, you know, if you want to convert um, crypto or fiat to crypto and vice versa, you certainly need to do full KYC. And so um, if you're doing it with RAMP, for example, then definitely expect RAMP to, to take your, um, your ID. Um, and so right now what we're working on in Valora is a way to actually try to make that simpler so that rather than doing the KYC in each cash and cash out provider, uh, we want to just pull it up into Valora. So it's a seamless experience and you only have to do it once in the wallet and then you can use it with any provider. So keep an eye out for that. I think that the team is going to be talking more about that at Solo Connect. Uh, I think it's going to be really, really exciting. 
All right, awesome. Um, I see a question on the chat that I just wanted to address um, from Andrew. How will we add private transactions so we can really deliver a Venmo-like experience? Yeah, really, really great question. So I think it's certainly the case that if you want to use a chain as a medium of exchange, um, you probably need stronger privacy guarantees than the ones you get if you're just using it as a store of value. Um, and so privacy has always been pretty top of mind uh, for people in the cell ecosystem. Uh, one example of this that I think you're aware of, uh, I saw a little bit of uh, talk about is Poof. Um, Poof is more than just um, using um, uh, new addresses for all your transactions. It is a SNARK-based um, privacy protocol that um, actually is completely novel. Um, I think it started with as Tornado, but it's extended to allow multi-asset and multi-actual um, uh, amount transactions. So you can send any amount, not just uh, not just uh, certain fixed sizes. Right now, it's integrated as a DAP in, in Valora, but um, one of the nice things about that DAP screen is that we can see which DAPs people are using the most uh, and um, and actually integrate uh, some of the functionality directly into Valora if uh, if we see that a DAP is, is very, very popular. Um, and so uh, hopefully people will be using it and will really value their privacy, and, and then we can integrate it natively in Valora. Um, there's also some interesting ZK Snark based compliance uh, companies now that are building on Celo as well. Um, and I think that will um, also make it much easier to build um, really great privacy offerings on the platform. So keep an eye out for that as well. Okay, awesome. So we have another question from Uerton. Um, which auditing companies do you suggest? Is it necessary to audit only the smart contract or the entire project to get listed on Valora? Yeah, really great question. I think certainly the smart contracts are, are a minimum. Um, I'd have to check with the team on whether or not they also require the whole application, but um, I think the smart contracts are certainly uh, the more critical piece. Uh, in terms of which um, providers we recommend, uh, I mean, personally, I really like uh, Trailer Bits and Open Zeppelin. I think both of those are, are exceptional. Uh, Sertora also uh, is, is exceptional, and I think it maybe even worked with past solo camp companies. Um, uh, but, you know, these are the creme de la creme, and they're very difficult to get time on and very, very expensive. And so, um, uh, now there's this uh, a whole bunch of companies that are providing the service. Uh, I think Delora is um, happy to uh, use any of the kind of recognizable uh, companies, um, simply because yeah, it, it would just be too difficult for everyone to try to get uh, either Open Zeppelin or Trail of Bits. They're just so backed up. All right, so now we have a question from Alone. <laughs> Are there plans to launch a stable coin for the Philippines? Hey, Alon. Uh, <laughs> yes, there are plans. Um, I think it's the next one on the list. Um, right now, I think the team is uh, working hard to um, grow the ecosystem around the Brazilian Cello Real. Um, as I mentioned, there's a few centralized exchanges that are adding support. There's also um, a bunch of uh, debit card and direct payment uh, integrations that are happening that will let you, for example, use Cello Brazilian Real to buy uh, food at McDonald's uh, and other places. So the team is, is really actively working on, uh, on landing all those integrations. And as soon as all of that is done, uh, the Philippines is next. All right, exciting. Um, okay, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, what are the best ways to connect with Celo on web browsers and mobile devices, and which wallets do you suggest using? Randy, do you want to take that one? Well, yes. Oh my goodness, I just did the presentation on this. 
uh, Use Contract Kit is by far the least frictional to get started. So check out Use Contract Kit. I, I believe this video is recorded, so you can go back. But no worries, just go to docs.sella.org and just type in there uh, DApp, Progressive DApp, and you'll find it. Uh, it'll get you started as quickly as possible. That's the fastest way to get started building. So that way you can touch base on all platforms. It's dynamic, it's mobile focused, mobile first approach available for you to use today. And it has all the, the wallets that, uh, that people are using on the platform, all there. So you, you basically get the support with very little effort. Mm -hmm. Including Wallet Connect, which is built in, fantastic service. All right. Awesome. Um, well, I think this, I think we're, we're time. So I'm just going to wrap up in the next couple of minutes. Um, Brandy and Merrick, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we say goodbye? Yeah. Well, only just to emphasize uh, what Brandy mentioned at the start, you know, Celecamp um, is just this incredible program. Uh, I'm just so thrilled to see it in its fifth batch. Ooh, uh, it's uh, um, it's just so amazing both to see how um, much incredible mentorship uh, it's provided to, to folks in the past and, and to see what incredible companies they've, they've built um, going through the program. And so if you're just, you know, on the fence about applying or, or kind of curious, uh, I just can't emphasize uh, just how incredible it is. Do not hesitate. It's going to be a really great batch. Well Thank said. You. Well said. I was just going to reemphasize that the importance that you're in the right community. If you notice through the ebb and flows of the emotional uh, ecosystem of blockchain as a whole, Cello is constantly focusing on building. Like we set our emotions aside and we focus on building uh, with utility to empower you. Uh, and so you're in the right place. Good hands, definitely, Cello Camp. Check it out if you're not in. What a wonderful program. Thank you so much. I had a blast and I'm super excited. Merrick, did I hear 140,000 transactions per second? And th the other thing I noticed is that we have test and move support coming along. This is showing the elastic, uh, elastic nature of our platform. But uh, one thing I want to note is in your graph, you show the mobile connectivity side. I think that's really important. Your, your graph there shows the difference, 3G, 4G, 5G, the connectivity expanding globally, but it doesn't say, and it has noted on there, uh, IoT. And when we think about the expansion with IoT devices, like holy Toledo, there's some massive opportunities here. And I just want to say with 140,000 transactions per second, and there's no ceiling on this, right? There's no glass ceiling. Like, why do we have to stop there? The things will get involved over time. But the reach of Cello providing accessibility for all, well, I'm just so proud that we're here with a mission purpose and we're fulfilling it. Love it. Job well done. And I'm excited for all of you in Cello Camp and the community out there builders. Builders build on. Fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, the streamcast today, Rachel. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Brandy and Merrick. This was Awesome, and I'm I'm so excited for batch five. You know, we started at Cell Camp when it was on testnet, and to see um, just the growth of the ecosystem as a whole, and the technology and the community has just been amazing to be a part of and to watch. So um, I'm really really um, excited to see what's what's gonna come ahead. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. This was really awesome. And I just want to thank our audience for tuning in and joining us. I just want to remind everyone, March 22nd is the deadline to apply for Cello Camp. And um, we look forward to receiving your applications um, to uh, uh, everyone who tuned in. Thank you for joining. And uh, don't forget about Cello Connect. Um, I think Alona had posted it. So we're really excited to see you all in Barcelona and uh, to meet many of you for the first time in person. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, so on that note, um, I wish you all a great day. And thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next Thanks time. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.